Did you know that the current four emperors were actually foreshadowed on the cover of volume 25? And not only that, but they are in the exact same position as their bounty posters were shown in chapter 1053. But there's a twist. Because behind Shanks, there is a strange mysterious man thing giving a bit of a thumbs up. Who is this man and why is he being depicted alongside the new four emperors and a goat? We'll find out after the intro. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and the answer to the question it is that I brought up is that this guy is a miscellaneous miner. Buggy accidentally discovered him while searching for treasures, after which point our happy miner put Buggy to work digging for delicious minerals. And Dota chose to put him on the cover of volume 25 for, for reasons. But my guess is that it's because Buggy is one of Oda's favorite characters, which is almost certainly why he is now a fully fledged Emperor of the Sea. And we, we need to talk about this. I'm just wondering what Buggy didn't do to earn Yonko status. At this rate, he'll fumble his way to the One Piece and accidentally land on it after slipping on a banana peel. And we joke and we laugh, but this is now, and I suppose has always been quite a legitimate possibility. I've made several videos long, long ago in the past championing the idea that Buggy will become an emperor, but I've also made a couple posing the idea that he could very well eventually become the Pirate King, which isn't to take anything away from Luffy. He will still be the Pirate King, but a Pirate King can exist both before and after Luffy. And honestly, I can see Buggy failing all the way to the top. One of the funniest things to me isn't so much Buggy's status as an emperor, but more so the fact that Moshi and Kabaji are now considered commanders alongside the likes of Mako, Katakuri, and King. Although I suppose in Kabaji's case, he does have something in common with King because they both lost to Zoro. And I suppose Moji and Katakuri both lost to Luffy actually, so yeah. Although thinking about it, that Orange Town fight is going to be remembered very differently by history. Instead of a brief skirmish between wacky pirates, this will become known as the battleground of Emperor Luffy versus Emperor Buggy, the battle between two legends for the sake of the future, as well as for the sake of dog food. And also what a frankly boss maneuver from Oda here because he was all like, by the way, Buggy's an emperor. No, I will not provide any context to that. Catch you guys in four weeks, bye. And then I imagine he just drives away in a car packed with money and Nami cosplayers. Oh, and by the way, this amazing image of Buggy was actually drawn by one of our fantastic channel artists. And three lucky subscribers from this video are going to win a custom artwork requesting whatever they'd like. For example, one Grand Fleet member requested a Super Saiyan Jinbei and that is exactly what they got. To win, simply be subscribed to the channel and leave a one sentence comment with your art request. And yes, you do need to be subscribed because YouTube shows me this fun like little dot thing next to your name, so there is no fooling me. You'll also receive a high quality digital copy of your request, as well as have it featured in future videos, becoming part of Grand Line Review history. Okay, more clown stuff. So I liked the buggy failing up gag at first, but in this case, it actually angered me to my core. Fair enough, and I would say that you're definitely not the only one. Twitter has certainly been flooded with people spouting opinions, negative opinions that is, about this whole buggy being the emperor thing. To me though, I, I don't get it. Like people often tear the crap out of me online for calling One Piece a goofy pirate comic, but th 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 that's what it is. Yes, it does tackle serious topics, deep drama, and some incredibly epic world building, but in the end, all of that is secondary to Oda just wanting to have fun. It's a wacky adventure, and crazy things are going to happen on said wacky adventure, which is what separates One Piece from every other shonen battle manga that just takes themselves far, far too seriously. You know, this buggy thing actually kind of reminds me of Mr. Satan from Dragon Ball. As a child, I hated him. I, yeah, he was so weird looking. He wasn't strong at all. And every time he was on screen was just a waste of space when we could have been watching other punch fighting. However, as an adult, Mr. Satan is one of my favorite Dragon Ball characters. And the fact that the world is still recognizing him as their strongest warrior over Goku and Vegeta, it's, it's amazing and I love it so much. So I can understand that some people feel that sure, this is taking the buggy joke just a little bit too far. But as per usual, I suspect the majority are loving this. So to make sure I did a poll and almost 80% of all respondents love that Buggy is an emperor. Granted, my audience are probably more likely to share my opinion than others, but it's still pretty overwhelming. Loved the chapter. I'm hoping Buggy discovered Captain John's treasure, which is what led him to become so infamous. That is a very good point. For anyone who doesn't know, finding Captain John's treasure has been Buggy's arc in the series. Quite similar to Luffy looking for the One Piece, really. And Captain John himself was a member of the Rocks Pirates whose corpse was stolen and turned into one of Gekko Moria's salt despising zombies. 
and I always thought that he may have found that treasure during the time skip, and that's how he had the capital to start up his mercenary service. But also maybe not, because for all of his failures, Buggy very much became one of the most successful businessmen in the series, right alongside Wapol and a starfish. Either way, Buggy doesn't quite get the credit he deserves for some things, but for other things, he gets far too much credit. I wonder what would be Rayleigh's reaction to all of this? Not only did he once sailed with the two swabbies who later became big shots, he also trained one. This is such a great thought to think that three of the now four emperors, I guess there were always four, three of the new four emperors are all people that Rayleigh more or less mentored is, is wow. More in the case of Luffy and Shanks, probably less in the case of Buggy because I don't know how many wise lessons he took in. Probably didn't have a lot of time to listen due to spending all of his time accidentally deep throating that uh, devil fruit. And it's interesting because it kind of mirrors the original set of emperors because three of them came from directly under rocks. So we've had another generational shift in a very positive manner. At least I'm assuming it's positive. Given that Luffy and Shanks are two of his fellow emperors, I dare say that Buggy would be quite a natural ally of them, but, but also maybe not. He's funny, but remember Buggy Buggy is, is also a bit of a dick. He's a funny phallus, and maybe he might throw his allegiance behind Blackbeard. And as for the original question, I can't imagine that Rayleigh's reaction would be anything other than to just laugh uncontrollably, and then probably get drunk, start gambling, lose a lot of money, and sell himself into slavery to make up for those gambling debts. It absolutely crushed my heart simply seeing the wholesomeness of Jinbei. I hope that panel will win more people over to accepting him as a member of the crew. Something I've come to realize is that Jinbei possesses this incredibly unique unique quality amongst the Straw Hats, which is modesty. Every other member of the crew, to varying degrees, is quite brash, impulsive, and frankly, downright selfish, which makes Jinbei's more humble and respectsome persona a really great new feature to the crew. Because we've definitely been missing someone who has the ability to act like a politician or a diplomat or just anyone who navigates situations with some sort of degree of nuance. I'm sad this chapter didn't end with the toast that started the raid to welcome Jinbei to the crew. This is another fantastic point, because that has to happen at some stage very shortly. The entire reason behind not doing that toast when we had the chance was to celebrate Jinbei joining right here and now. And I know this still isn't confirmed, but I do have to wonder if part of that was also so that we didn't have to do two toasts and maybe Jinbei's crew joinage will be paired up with Yamato's. Either way, get to it because my shark man needs the official stamp of approval that he so desperately deserves. The fact that Kozuki Sukiyaki is alive means we have two people who can decipher poneglyphs and I'm looking forward to him teaching and passing down this skill to Momo. Thus, he cannot hide his identity forever. In retrospect, I suppose this always had to happen, or maybe not. I mean, maybe we could have just lost the art of poneglyph making in history because hopefully we won't need it going forward after we've uh, beaten all the bad guys. I do agree that Tsukiyaki will probably need to reveal himself eventually and teach Momonosuke how to both read and create poneglyphs, which has a lot of exciting potential. Perhaps Momo will create a whole new series of stones telling the adventures of Luffy, much like how our current poneglyphs tell the tale of Joy Boy. And maybe those stones are what we are reading right now. And as it turns out, Momonosuke is the narrator of One Piece. Sukiyaki's aliveness is significantly more important than I initially thought though, because he is now essentially a second Nico Robin, meaning that if anyone did find out about his existence, like perhaps say a certain blackly bearded man, then Sukiyaki could be the vehicle that makes him a legitimate threat to becoming Pirate King. Or even Momonosuke once he learns, but basically Robin is no longer the only way forward. I'm so happy that the Admiral is looking like a real villain, unlike Fuji. Taro, who let them pass by the end. It would be great to see him chase the Straw Hats into the next island where they can battle it out. So the Straw Hats being chased off an island, that's very classic One Piece, but surely, surely we're done with that, right? On Dress Rosa, Luffy was ready to fight an admiral until all of the people got in the way and stopped it. So if Ryukugyu does attempt a bout of plant-based punch battling, then I absolutely do not see Luffy backing down or anyone else currently on Wano for that matter. Again, this dude is shockingly confident confidently strolling on into the home territory of a force of people who just beat two emperors. So on his own, surely he cannot win. So I dare say we'll be finding a different solution to this potential conflict. However, what I do love is Ryukugyu's desire to attain praise from Sakazuki Senpai. Because he's all like, huh, you know, if I take that kid's head, then Sakazuki, he will give me a pat on the head. Every time Buggy enter any system or place, it's is destroyed pretty quickly. That is actually true, come to think of it. Pre-time skip, he formed an alliance with Whitebeard and then like a couple of hours later, Whitebeard was dead and the pirates more or less collapsed. Then he became a warlord, after which point Fujitora said, nah lol, and implemented his anti-warlord agenda. And now finally he's an emperor. So this could be a bad omen that the emperor system will still collapse imminently. The pirate Shanks was talking about to the elder stars 
was 100% buggy. This is such a ridiculous, stupid, absurd idea, and I love it. It's not a new thought, but I am now not at all confident dismissing it as a simple meme. It's entirely possible that Shanks just strolled on into Marijuana with the agenda of making the world government fear Buggy a lot more than they really should, thus setting Buggy up as some sort of grand piece in whatever the Shanks master plan is. I still think it was Luffy, and I still think it was about the Devil Fruit, but from here on out, until we discover the truth, I am not ruling Buggy out. Morgan's intelligence team is the best. They got a picture of Gear 5 for Luffy's new wanted poster. All right, so this is something I didn't mention in my chapter review because, because frankly, it just slipped my mind because man, that, that was just so much of the stuff that happened. But this photo was taken by an agent named Guernica, which is of course a name shared with that super famous painting by Pablo Picasso. And very ironically, it's an anti-war painting, so interesting name choice for an agent of the most militant force in the world. It's also the name of a town in Spain where the painting takes its name, so let's not read too deeply into this. I'm assuming that Guernica is Pineapple's name, although I very much prefer Pineapple and I will continue to use it at every available opportunity. One of the more interesting things that we do know now though, is that Cypher Pole came into contact with the Big Mom Pirates, so they're still floating around one or wrecking whatever havoc they can. They must be getting pretty worried by now. It's been a whole week and there has been no news from either Big Mom or Perispero, or I guess anyone related to Kaido. And I really, really hope that they try to get up the waterfall again, only to fail. The failure is important. I want to know how many suns has the Thousand Sunny seen by this point in the story, canon only. I can't quite answer that question. I mean, I can. The Thousand Sunny has only seen one sun. I don't know about the amount of sunrises though. What I do know is that we've just experienced our first in-series sunrise in two whole years because the raid took place at night. So we were given two years of darkness, which very much goes on to rival Dressrosa's two years of eternal daylight. I predict a nice vacation for Oda and I certainly hope so. Our next chapter of One Piece won't be for almost four weeks, but don't worry because this channel will be holding down the fort with all sorts of amazing contents like this video. It's good and I look forward to seeing you there.